DJ This tutorial is on sound design in Ableton Live. As a music producer, I would always go through these sample packs and you know, you'd see these sections called atmospherics or effects and you'd hear all this really neat sounding stuff and I was always curious how they made that. Now, more recently as I've started to delve into Ableton Live, I've been able to figure out how to create a lot of those sounds, specifically using Ableton's MIDI mapping feature which is extremely powerful and makes it quite intuitive and easy to use and Ableton's Simpler and Sampler and some of their built-in effects. And now that I've figured that out, I wanted to run you through exactly some of the stuff I've been working on lately and share that information with you. So we're going to start off by using Ableton's built-in Simpler, which is basically a very simple sampler, hence the name. And it's free, comes built-in with Ableton Live, so it's a really easy one to start with. So I've got a MIDI track here, and I'm just going to go into Ableton's instrument browser here and drag a Simpler onto a MIDI track. Now, in the Simpler, we basically just drag and drop samples onto it, and then we can manipulate those samples. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a sample that I'm going to mangle and make an atmospheric out of. So I'm going to click down into my Samples section here, and what I've loaded up here is the one of the Vengeance sample packs, and these are some basic scratch samples. This is the one I'm going to use, so I simply just click on the sample, and I drag it down into Simpler. Now, in live, in order to actually play the Simpler, you have to do a couple of things that might not be so obvious right off the get-go. First of all, I'm on a laptop and I don't have a MIDI controller connected, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the laptop's keyboard to be able to play the Simpler. So this little button right up here, actually, when it's activated, allows you to use the computer keyboard to be able to actually play in, basically, MIDI notes in the same way as you'd use a MIDI controller. So, useful little feature to know about. Next. In order to actually read the MIDI information coming in, I need to either record enable this track or I need to select monitor to in. In this case, I'm just going to record enable this track. Now, in order to get the sample to do what I want it to, I'm just going to trim the edges of it. So I'm basically going to drag its start point and its end point so that they are at the very beginning and very end of the samples. Now, every time I hit a computer keyboard, it's going to play that sample once. Now for the effect that I'm going for, I actually need to loop the sample. So I'm going to activate the loop button here, which will continually replay the sample as long as I have the key held down. Next what I'm going to do is get into some MIDI mapping. And I've got connected to my laptop right now an Akai MPD32 drum pad controller. And that drum pad controller actually has some knobs on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter MIDI map mode by pressing Command M on a Mac, or just by pressing this MIDI button up here. And I'm going to click on the sample start point, and I'm going to MIDI map that. I'm also going to MIDI map loop and sample length. Now I'm MIDI mapping all of those to the same knob. Now I'm going to exit MIDI map mode, and I'm going to spin the knob so that it actually picks up all of these different knobs. Now, I just want you to have a listen to this as I press down on the key and play the sample. So as you can see, we've already got some pretty interesting sounding stuff that's very different than the original sample. You can't even tell what the original sample was, which is actually pretty sweet because it doesn't matter what type of sample you throw in here, you can always do something really um, fantastic sounding with it. Now we're going to take things a little bit further and we're going to start using some additional MIDI mapping and automation using LFOs to change the sound. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate our filter and I'm going to take our filter and I'm going to set it to uh, bandpass 12. I'm going to take our frequency, drag it to about 500 hertz or so, crank the resonance up. Now I'm going to activate our LFO and I'm going to increase the LFO amount to maximum basically. What this means is that the LFO is now going to be modulating the filter frequency so that we'll be able to hear the filter sweeping through the sound as I play it. Wow, 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 wow. 
Now the filter is currently sweeping at the LFO rate, which is one hertz. Now the interesting thing here is we can modulate the LFO rate. Um, we can actually automate the LFO rate using MIDI mapping as well. So I'm going to enter MIDI map mode. I'm going to click on LFO rate and I'm going to twist the same knob that I used for everything. Everything's running off one knob here. And actually one more thing I'll do is in MIDI map mode it allows me to edit the range of motion. So I don't actually want the LFO rate to go all the way down to 0.01 hertz. I only want it to go down to 1 hertz and a maximum of 30 hertz. So I'm just going to edit that manually there. And now let's have a quick listen to what this sounds like. So basically as I scroll through the sample, the LFO rate at the top is very quick and the LFO rate at the bottom is very slow. So you can hear it starting to change and evolve and modulate as I scroll through the sample. One thing you'll notice as you're playing the sample in this way is you'll get a lot of times some pops and clicks. And the way to eliminate that is by using the fade knob here. Basically just adds tiny little crossfades to the sample loop points and you'll eliminate that nicely with this feature. Great. So now we're going to start to push the sound and get it to sound more extreme. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crank up my resonance nice and high. And now I'm going to make use of the ability to have the LFO modulate other things in the simpler. So one of the things that the LFO can modulate is the volume. So I'm actually going to have my LFO to volume amount up to about 50% here. And let's just check how that sounds. Next I'm going to enter MIDI map mode and I'm going to have that same knob modulate the sample's spread. Now spread basically detunes the left and the right channels to create a really wide stereo image. And if we have the spread increasing as we scroll through the sample, it'll start to add to that nice evolving sound that we want. <laughs> And on a final note, I'm going to use the transpose feature. So here you can see as well is we have the transpose that basically will increase the sample's pitch by a number of semitones or decrease it by a number of semitones. So I'm going to again enter MIDI map mode, click on transpose, and twist the same knob. And I'm actually going to edit this so that it only goes to a range between 0 and 48 semitones. Excellent. So we've covered some basic sound design capabilities that Ableton Live and its built-in Simpler are capable of. Pretty interesting sounding stuff. Uh, this is a series of tutorials, and in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to cover rendering this stuff out to audio, editing it in audio, and actually using these settings that we've created to drop in different samples. Because one of the most powerful features of Simpler is that I can drop any new sample into here, and it'll preserve all of these settings that we've just created. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Stay tuned for the next one, and happy producing. Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me.